everyone, welcome back to Our Ship Dreams with me, Sita. It's great to see you all. I hope you're all enjoying our Flights of Fantasy series. Taking part in our activities means that you can join the Airship Dreamers Club and get your very own badge. Today, I'm really excited to introduce you to Dr. Adam Priest, who is going to give us an exciting insight into the science of flight. I've always wondered how things can fly in the sky. Let's find out together. Over to you, Adam. Thank you, Zita, and hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Adam Priest, and I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm going to talk to you today about how aircraft fly. Firstly, what is an aircraft? Well, an aircraft is just a vehicle which can leave the ground and fly through the air. How does it work? Well, it works because as it moves through the air, it pushes on it and the air pushes back, and that keeps it up in the sky. What we're going to look at now are the two main ways that an aircraft can stay in the sky, and we're going to do a few demonstrations to show this. Oh, brilliant! What's the first way, Adam? The first way that an aircraft can fly is using something called buoyancy. When thinking about buoyancy, it's quite useful to use water. But you may say, well, water is not the same as air. But in many ways, you'd be right, and in some ways, you'd be wrong. Water and air move in very similar ways. And the advantage of water is that you can see it. Right. Everyone at home, we can join in with a really fun way to test this. All you'll need is a large bucket of water, or you could use your sink or maybe even your bath. Then, if you have a ball of modelling clay or some plasticine, that would be brilliant. And look everyone, Adam has the help of the brilliant Kitty. Hello Kitty! Hello everybody! So what do we do, Adam? To show you how buoyancy works, in a sink or a bowl, carefully fill up a jug of water to the top. Now take a ball of modelling clay and carefully drop it into the jug. What happens? Well, you should see some of the water will spill over the top of the jug. And why is this? The modelling clay takes up a certain amount of space and when you put it into the jug some of the water has to move out of the way to let the modelling clay sit in the jug as well. We use a fancy word to say the water has been moved out of the way. We say the water has been displaced. Now, add some more water to your bowl or your sink and put the modelling clay back into the water. As the water is being moved out of the way or displaced by the clay, the water presses back in on the clay and if the clay is not very heavy, it will be pushed back up and out of the water and it will float. The more water the object pushes out of the way, then the more the water will push back on, on the object. Now if we take the same amount of clay and we spread it out, it will push more water out of the way, which will allow it to be a bit more buoyant, so it should float. Like this. I just made it float a bit more. Wow, it's floating! Brilliant work, Kitty! Everyone, why don't you give this a go at home? Air works in the same way. The bigger an object is, the more the air pushes on it. And if the object is not too heavy, it will float. This is how airships work. We make a very large balloon which pushes or displaces lots and lots of air out of the way. The problem is that air is not very heavy at all, so we need our balloon to be even lighter than the air around it so that it will float. To do this, we use a special gas called helium. And because it's very light, the balloon floats very well. Helium also is very good because it can't burn and it doesn't react with anything, so it's very safe. Right, time for Kitty to show us how this works. Over to you, Kitty. Here we have two balloons. They're both about the same size, but they're filled with different gases. The pink one on the right is filled with helium. The green one on the left is filled with air. Now, what will happen if we let go of them? The pink one goes up to the ceiling, and the green one ends up down on the ground. Cool. Wow, I had lots of fun learning about buoyancy. Thank you, Adam. Now, that's not the only way that something can fly in the air, is it? Buoyancy is only one way of getting into the air. In fact, the most widely used way is to put some wings on our aircraft and shape those wings in a special way so that as they move through the air, the air pushes on them and lifts them off the ground. To look at how this works, let's look at something called pressure. Believe it or not, we're all living at the bottom of a sea of air, which is pressing on us every second of the day. We don't feel this because it's been that way ever since we were born. And that those bits of air are pressing on us all over, and so we don't have any net effect on us. However, if more air hits us on one side of our body than the other, then you'll feel a force pushing you away from that flow of air. Anyone who's been walking on a windy day can feel this. The air pushes on one side of your body and it pushes you away from the wind. Yes, I've definitely felt this. I'm sure you have at home too.
there's a fun experiment we can do to test pressure. We have the help of Leo for this experiment. Take a straw and a Malteser. If you blow through the straw and direct the air towards the Malteser, it will move away from the air because you're increasing the pressure on the side of the Malteser facing the air blowing out of the straw. Because we have more air hitting the front of the Malteser, we say that there is a high pressure here and the reaction of this high pressure is to move the Malteser backwards. If you do the opposite by sucking on the straw and get the end of the straw close to Malteser, then you'll find the Malteser moves towards the straw. This is because there is now low pressure on the front of the Malteser. So the air press is more on the back, so rolling it towards the straw and holding it onto the end of the straw if you suck hard enough. That was so much fun! So how does this connect to aeroplanes, Adam? Right, so we've seen that if we've got high pressure air, it will push an object away from it. And if we've got low pressure air, then the opposite is true and it will suck the object towards it. So what if we could shape our aircraft wings so that we can get low pressure on top of the wings and that would lift them up away from the ground and lift the rest of the aircraft up with them. So how can we get low pressure air? Well, the fact is that the faster air moves, the lower the pressure is. You can see this if you get a piece of paper, gently place it under your lips and blow along the top of the paper and you'll see that it will lift up to meet the airflow. And that's because your airflow you're blowing out is a lower pressure than the surrounding air and it lifts the paper. So if we've got this faster moving air, which is at lower pressure, then we need to find a way of speeding up the airflow over the top of our wings okay, to get this lower pressure. And we can do this by curving the wings upwards to meet the airflow. And you'll see that if you look down the side of the wing from the end, you'll see that the top of the surface is more curved than the bottom surface. And this speeds up the airflow, you get lower pressure on top of the wings. And this is enough, if you move fast enough, is enough to lift the aircraft off the ground. Adam works for Aircraft Research Association, ARA, and tests aircraft in a wind tunnel. This is an example of a wind tunnel model that we'd put in our wind tunnel. And it's got special paint applied to its wings. You can see on this left wing here, that as the air flows over it, it's made the paint take a different colour depending on the pressure there. And as you saw, if we know what the pressure is on the wings of an aircraft, then we can work out how it's going to lift off the ground, how it's going to speed up, slow down and turn. Everyone, you can try this by making a paper aeroplane. It's large and light so it can float through the air. See how far you can get yours to fly. So we've seen that there are two main ways for an aircraft to fly. One is to make it light enough that it floats, so that it's buoyant. The other way is to shape it so that as it moves through the air, differences in air pressure around the wings and the body will help to lift the aircraft off the ground. Aircraft like the Airlander use both of these methods. It's big, it's full of helium, which helps it to lift off the ground in a static way using buoyancy. But it's also shaped so that the top surface is more curved than the bottom surface, so as it moves through the air, it gets some lift from the air pressure around it as well, so a dynamic lift. As an aerospace engineer, my main job every day is to look at how the shape of objects will allow them to fly through the air. We can do this in two main ways. Firstly, we can use a wind tunnel. So we make a model of the aircraft that we were interested in and we put it in a wind tunnel and we blow air around that tunnel, sometimes as fast as a thousand miles an hour, and see how the air flows over the aircraft, what it does with the pressure around the aircraft, and how that pressure pushes on the aircraft and makes it fly, turn, speed up, slow down. Another way to do this, to look at aircraft, is to use computers, very, very big, powerful computers. And we run lots and lots of simulations, and these simulations allow us to look at what the air is doing around the aircraft. And again, we can then look and say, how is that air pushing on the aeroplane, and how is it gonna get it to lift, speed up, slow down, and turn? I find this fascinating. Every day is different, I get to look at new aircraft, I get to look at new ideas and uh, see some really interesting things that no one has ever seen before. Thank you so much Adam! Everyone, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the science of flight and hopefully doing some brilliant experiments at home too! If you're joining in with our Flights of Fantasy adventure, you're one step closer to completing all of our activities, becoming a member of our Airship Dreamers Club and getting your very own Airship Dreamer badge. Stay in touch and let us know your experience of taking part and for more information and everything you need to know about Flights of Fantasy, just head to our website, airshipdreams.com. See you next time and in the meantime, keep airship dreaming. Bye bye!